I define grit as the combination of perseverance and passion for a very long-term, meaningful goal. By perseverance, I mean working hard, finishing what you start, even though you might encounter setbacks. And then I define passion as having an internal commitment to something that, that doesn't waver, that you, know, you wake up and you think, like, I'm still interested in this, not only the next day or the next week, but, but months or in the case of adults, maybe not young people, but in adulthood, you know, even decades. So this combination of perseverance and passion is, to me, an important determinant of achievement, but it's not all of character. Character is much broader. And yes, it includes grit, but also things like curiosity and gratitude, you know, all the things really that make us people who are leading lives that are helpful to ourselves and helpful to other people. In my research studies, I find that grit is very, very different from talent or IQ. In other words, it's not that if you know how gritty someone is, you know how smart they are and vice versa. In most of my research studies, I find that grit and measures of talent are, are really unrelated. And that actually emphasizes why it is that grit predicts achievement in situations like graduating from high school or finishing training at West Point or even winning the National Spelling Bee. It's because talent is not enough to achieve our goals and our dreams. It is also important to sustain hard work and to sustain our commitment, our interest in things over long periods of time. I like to tell my own kids that grit is not a guarantee of success. And by that I mean that even if you are the grittiest person, you know, at tryouts for the basketball team or, you know, the grittiest person in math class, it's not a guarantee that you're going to be number one. And that's because lots of things are going to determine what happens. I mean, talent does matter. It's not that, you know, your uh, talents don't matter at all. Also, there's luck in life. I mean, there's a lot of luck in life. So I don't think we ever want to tell kids, oh, if you do, you know, this, if you become grittier, you know, all of your problems will be solved. I don't think that's the message of maturity and character development. I do think it is uh, about, you know, taking pride in the kind of person you're becoming. And yes, if you are grittier and you work harder, your odds of being successful and achieving what you want are certainly greater. It's very important when you think about character strengths like grit to acknowledge in the most profound way the environment that kids are in. I don't think the message of grit is that you know kids who are growing up in poverty who are confronting racism or um, lack of opportunity in the myriad ways that society is serving that up these days, um, that, that these realities don't exist. In fact, I think structural barriers to opportunity are in part what undermines the development of resilience and grit. If you have no reason to believe that working hard is going to pay off, then guess what? You will not develop a work ethic. So I think there is nothing more urgent, honestly, than working on structural inequality. Um, at the same time, you know, when a parent comes home uh, to their house, um, uh, they have their kids in front of them. And, and I think at the same time as we have to acknowledge these structural barriers, we also have to say, well, what what can I do? And I say to my own kids, you know, life isn't entirely fair. You know, some kids are going to have many fewer opportunities than you have. Um, you may have fewer opportunities than another person that you meet. But at the same time as acknowledging those structural realities, you do have to, you know, do what you can do. And in many cases, that does mean, you know, within, within the realm of what you can do, you know, wor working as hard as you can, taking feedback, um, seeing what you can learn from, from uh, you know, the day you had. I believe that character strengths like grit and not just grit are malleable, that they can be learned, that they can be encouraged. In particular, when I think of kids, I think of how parents can help their kids develop character strengths like grit. One very important thing that parents are doing, in fact, they don't even need to be told to do this, they're already doing this, is to model for their kids. Now, whether you're thinking that you're modeling or not, you are, because your kids are watching you, and how you treat other people, and how you, for example, in the case of grit, respond to failure, respond to setbacks, your kids are watching and they're taking cues about what the right thing to do is in those cases. So, for example, with my own kids, who are 17 and 15, they were, they were younger when I was writing the book Grit, and they saw mommy cry a lot, 
and they saw mommy uh, complain a lot. They almost saw mommy throw her laptop into the Atlantic Ocean, but that didn't quite happen. Um, the thing is, is that I don't think you're modeling invulnerability. I don't think you're modeling perfection. I think what you're modeling is um, is is falling down and getting back up again, and you know having the uh, having the uh, you know feeling that you're not perfect, but you can keep trying and that no matter what happens, you will learn something and make some kind of forward momentum.